I know I've, I'm good at stealing jobs, but I've, I've moved on. You know, I've like, I've stealed accents as well. So like this accent, you know, I stole it uh, from an English guy. Um, I've stolen identities as well, you know. So I like to think, you know, like Joe Payne is a very British name, right? It's probably the, the, the most, it's probably the whitest name you've ever come across. <laughs> it is, isn't it, right? I like to think there's a, an English white guy somewhere with the name Patel, right? <laughs> <laughs> really strong Indian accent. <laughs> so they can only work in a, in a call center. <laughs> <laughs> but I've stolen other stuff as well. Uh, currently I'm into stealing white women. <laughs> uh, uh, so my current girlfriend, she's, uh, she's white from Devon. Like, she's so white, you know? She, she looks like she just come off a vampire movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she doesn't call it stealing, obviously, right? She says, that's, that's incorrect. Uh, it's kidnapping. <laughs> uh, by the way, just to... I, I'm not racist, but I do hate white people. <laughs> and, and the reason I hate white people is because... Have you noticed, right, how white people, right, they, white comedians, they write their notes on the back of their hands, right? Because when I try to do that, uh, I couldn't actually be read it back because <laughs> I can't read them. <laughs> my, my, my own handwriting. Um, so what I do is I write my notes on a piece of paper, a white piece of paper, because I am racist. Um, no, and, and just to show how successful I am, it's written on uh, on the back of a, uh, a bank letter. <laughs> this is our success. This is known as my my set. So I just go through this. Uh, so I don't hate white people. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody part of the LGBT community? Bit? Anybody part of that community? Anybody here? Because I've recently decided to come out. Um, I've, I've come out of the closet um, as uh, as Indian. So, uh, uh, did you guys know what that means? It means I can arrange marriage. Yeah? Do you guys understand arranged marriages? It means that I am so shit at chatting out women <laughs> that my mum had to say. <laughs> and obviously, you know, being Indian, you know, I work in IT. Um, and what that means, <laughs> what that means is that even though I'm married, uh, I'm still a virgin. Because <laughs> I'm so shit at sex. That my dad had to step in. Oh. I'm joking. I'm joking, it was my uncle. <laughs> now, did you know that in a, in a traditional Indian wedding, I'm, I'm sure you guys know this, that in a traditional Indian, you end up with two wives. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. One's a woman I married, and the other a mother. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know either of them. I met them both at the same time, arranged marriage. And neither would sleep with me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my life. Um, I'm I'm from. Um, a, 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 it was like a mixed race marriage because uh, I'm from the very north of India, right? And she was fucking mental. <laughs> <laughs> and you know you know about Indian weddings, right? They're really long, right? Our wedding was so long that by the end of it, we were seeing other people. <laughs> 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 Um, she's uh, she's half half Indian, half Scottish, because uh, she loves curry, um, <laughs> deep fried. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, by the way, just uh, for this next joke, my, my parents still live in India, um, you know, and still work very very traditionally, you know, just like their parents and their grandparents uh, in a call center, <laughs> <laughs> just uh, south of Birmingham, um, <laughs> which is nice, yeah. Which is very nice. Uh, do any, anybody here suffer from the cold? Do you guys do you guys um, do you guys enjoy the cold? No, no, no. 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 not even in Isle of Wight. No, no. Okay. Well, I've got the perfect solution for you: cold showers. You know, uh, if you have a cold shower, you won't feel the cold for the rest of the day. I I, I do like 10, 15 minutes cold showers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Indian, right? So I'm not that well endowed down there. But, uh, you know, like after after five minutes, it shrinks so much right, that it turns into a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm in there for fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> Anybody on any kind of diet here, by the way? That's no? Nobody? So I'm on a diet, as you can probably tell. You know, you know, you know, you look this good, right? Um, if you're not on a diet. I'm on a keto diet. Do you, anybody heard of that? Right? It's known as the zero carb diet. Uh, my friends call it zero personality. <laughs> and my doctor uh, calls it cocaine. <laughs> I mean, Dina, sorry. <laughs> he's, uh, he's in prison now. Uh, so if anybody here is supplying. <laughs> I can do the fresh supply. It could be years before we come back out of prison. Uh, so, uh, do you guys know about this uh, alcohol rating system? Do you know where a guy looks at a woman? Right, I'm just picking you because you're sitting in the front, right? Mm -hmm. guy will go, do that, like, oh, she's a six minor. She's not, right? But guys do that, right? right? They do that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially in the Isle of Wight, right? <laughs> But, you know, women do the same thing. They'll, they'll pick on a guy and go, oh, he's about eight glasses of wine, right? I'm not saying you are, yeah. You know? <laughs> but women do that as well, right? So this system also applies to comedians as well. So if you don't find a comedian funny, it's because you just haven't drunk enough. <laughs> so basically it's your fault. <laughs> For example, Michael McIntyre, he's been rated at one glass of shandy. I've been rated at 16 pints <laughs> of tea. <laughs> but you know, on a sexual attractiveness scale, I've got some gay friends, and I'm so modern, right? Uh, and they rate me at eight glasses of wine. But women, on the other hand, and I'm sure these ladies here will agree, rate me at a really low four bottles of champagne. <laughs> right? Which must be right, because that's when I used to get my uh, wife into bed. Because <laughs> she had massive problems sleeping um. you know, uh, with me. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 we found a solution. I googled it. Uh, we got divorced. Because <laughs> 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 they're cheaper. <laughs> In Southampton, strangely. Yeah, let's uh, bring Southampton into this, uh, into this line. Uh, have you heard of the, you know there was that hoo-ha some years ago about the black James Bond. Do you guys know about that? Mm -hmm. You know where, you know, a fictional character like James Bond can't be black. Do you know? Uh, well, there is one character that can't be brown, Aquaman. Because <laughs> he's, got, he's got that beard, right? And he's got that really long hair. Now imagine Aquaman coming out of, uh, you, know, you know, New York, you know, out of the sea. To, to come and rescue America, obviously, because they need rescue, right? And, and, he would, and he was brown, right? He would spend weeks in customs, you know? In, uh, <laughs> but on the other hand, he would enjoy the waterboarding, wouldn't he? Like, <laughs> 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 uh, anybody here got any fetishes? Do you have any fetishes? <laughs> Come on, man. That is always been tough. Oh, there's someone else on the side. Has anybody got any fetishes here? Does, uh, anybody know? Nobody, right? All right. So I don't have a fetish, but I am so hot, right, that I am a fetish <laughs> for men in uniforms, do you know? Like when I go through security, buttons <laughs> pop, buttons pop, they got the line. It's great, I love it. Uh, it's, uh, it's the only thing that keeps me sane. Because you know, because we, we're creatures and we need uh, touch, we need physical touch. And I get a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> like a lot. You know, like, uh, I think this was before lockdown, I was in uh, going through Miami Airport. And, uh, you know, I got through security quite quickly. You know, that, was, that was a bit of a spring myself, but what I got through, right? And uh, the security guard started beelining for me because I think he saw that step in my, in my, in my feet. And, and he was putting these gloves on. You know those blue surgical gloves at the hospital, right? He was putting those on. I could see him beelining it, but my brain just didn't click, you know? I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And then he had the best chat of life. Right. This chat line never fails. He said, excuse me, sir, you have been randomly selected. <laughs> and that random number generator, right? You saw that, right? Anyway, anyway, it took three hours. Right? Three hours. It was intimate. I, I, wish he'd, I wish he'd slowed it down a bit. Do you know, like maybe, maybe you have a glass of wine beforehand. Like, it was so intimate, it felt like a third date. 
<laughs> my number, everything. I'm not gay, right? But, you know, I thought we'd connected, you know, at a deep level. Uh, and so, didn't ring me. Nothing. <laughs> but there's a pain with that. Anybody here taking cocaine? Come on, man! By the way, it says in the name! <laughs> Oh, go on. Oh, go on. <laughs> it must come through there. <laughs> so, any, anybody here? <laughs> anybody here taking any cocaine? You, you. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no police here. You know, you, I've searched them all. They're, they're all <laughs> oh, by the way, I've got to tell you this. A couple of years ago, I think three or four years ago, I did a, a gig. Um, somewhere in central London, and there was this woman, she was doing 10 minutes, right? And all her jokes were about defrauding the DSS. <clears throat> and she carried on, it was, it was reasonably funny, it was good, right? Uh, and then about halfway, there was a guy sitting right at the back all by himself, just sitting there, right? And so she's like, oh, you know, I'll ping him, you know, to see what, what's, what, you know, she asked him what his name was, and she, she asked him about what he does. He said he's a fraud investigator <laughs> with the DSS, right? <laughs> she said it with a straight face. This woman shit herself. Because <laughs> all her jokes were about defrauding the DSS. So every joke she was telling, it was about this. And she goes, it's only a joke. I, I, I'm not. I'm not actually on the on, on the doll. You know, like I'm not claiming anything. Like, every single joke she had to. He goes, yeah, 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 I know. I know. And she just didn't care. And that was the funniest thing, you know, <laughs> her trying to uh, redeem herself. So, uh, any here, uh, so the cocaine thing, right? Back to the cocaine thing. Right, so anybody, um, but I, I, when I was in Miami, uh, my mate there took me to this party, and they had no alcohol. Right? But they did have this long wooden table, and it had loads of white lines. <laughs> and everybody went out, did three lines, right? I was like, oh, yeah, but I don't want to be a party pooper. So I went up and did three lines as well. Uh, it turns out, if you've never taken cocaine before, three lines is too many. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I basically overdosed, right? Like, big time, right? So I'm here as high as a kite for like 18 hours, I think it was. <laughs> and I'm trying to video myself because I thought this is going to be amazing. <laughs> it was just. I just spent like three hours making faces at myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've watched yet, so that's it. Uh, <laughs> just, just don't do cocaine. Uh, if you are, start with one line <laughs> and build it up. <laughs> that's what I, what I should have done, you know? So next, you know, if you do supply me. <laughs> well, start with one line, all right? <laughs> and, and, and so, I don't know if you can tell from Max and I, I have one of these private educations. Um, <laughs> any other posh whites? No? No? Anybody? No? No, so I did this joke in Oxford, right? And even the bar staff were pretty <laughs> In Slough, I don't know if you guys know Slough, I had to explain to them what the school was. <laughs> 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 Did you go? Have you heard of this self identifying movement? Do you know Jordan Peterson? There's some he's a clear yeah. professor. He went yeah. up against the, the government, right? You, you know about this, right? Yeah. So he went up. Obviously, he lost, right? Um, and the, what the Canadian government was trying to do was make it illegal for you, not for you to call somebody what they don't want to be called. Like, for example, if you self identify as a cat legally, I like to call you a pussy, right? <laughs> and if you self-identify, for example, as a Tory, legally I'd have to address you as a cunt, right? <laughs> I actually believe in this movement. I think it's great, because I self-identify uh, as white. Um, <laughs> just for the privilege, just for the privilege. <laughs> you know there's this black light, like, like, I know we've got black people here, right? Uh, they, they, this is going to upset you, but... I, I, I forget this Black Lives Matter movement thing. It's bollocks, I think, personally, right? Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what is more pressing in this world. Not this Black Lives Matter. It's, I've come up with a new hashtag. It, it's White Lives Matter Even More. Right? <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> 
for the last couple of weeks, I've been self-identifying as white. Right? I haven't been touched. <laughs> Security ignore me. It's like I'm, I'm practically invisible. This is why you guys get depressed. <laughs> There's an epidemic of antidepressants. I'm actually on antidepressants now. Just because I'm self-identifying. <laughs> I think mean, this is a massive problem in the world. You know? We need to address this. So if you guys can, you know, follow my, you know, White Lives Matter even more, we can bring this, you know, to the to the world, the attention of the world. Because you guys are suffering in silence. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All that privilege is just, you know, it's really because you, you've got to be touched. You know, like, like after this gig. I, I need to be touched, you know, so I'm going to the airport, right? <laughs> like, I'm so confident, I don't even take my rucksack sometimes, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually from the Punjab in India, which is mm. north of India, right? Um, and it's a bit like whales, but rather than sheep, we've got a lot of snakes. Right. And they're a lot harder to shag. <laughs> don't trust me. I know. I know. Because I used to live in uh, Wales. Uh, <laughs> and they give great blowjobs. <laughs> Which is nice, you know, because uh, I hate clearing out of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, did, um, I took a show a few years ago to Edinburgh. Uh, and I, this is genuinely true, right? I took a show and I did it for an orphanage in India, right? and I managed to raise two thousand pounds for this orphanage. That's amazing, right? Yeah. And for every hundred pounds I raised, it fed, clothed, and educated one child for one year. That's awesome, right? Yeah. So next year, I'm sending my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Joking, I'm already there. I'm there. <laughs> Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't got any kids. Uh, that social services movement. <laughs> right, I'm gonna leave you with this. This is the last bit. Um, well, maybe we'll do another one. Uh, but let's see. But I've got some proper life advice. By, by the way, are there any virgins in the room? <laughs> Just me then. Right. <laughs> now, okay, if, if you are a virgin, but I've got some proper life advice. Don't, don't die a virgin. Right? Because there are terrorists waiting for you out there. That shit's real. Right? You don't want to find out that it was true. Because, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, yeah. Cause, you know they, it, it'll be a mess. You know, because like, you know, they blow themselves off. Right? <laughs> uh, I did have a joke about that as well, but I can't remember it anymore. By the way, since lockdown, I haven't been on stage much. Uh, and so this is me, this is the way to get back on stage, I see. So, let's go. I've actually one more last joke. Uh, it's about my name. I'm, I'm, I'm Joe Baines. I've been voted as the Indian with the whitest name <laughs> uh, by immigration. <laughs> Five years in a row. But my full name is Joseph. Baines. <laughs> but it's alright, I've showed it, so you guys can call me Joe. Medana <laughs> 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 did you guys get that? Did you get that? Of course you did, right? Now it's your go. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! He's doing the head shake! <laughs> That's racist! <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. That's just the Indian takeaway menu. Uh, just took me ages to memorize it. So I was like, yeah. Well, okay, thank you very much. The one thing I have not learned to do is how to end the show. Do you know, like, it's just annoying me. Because we had the show yesterday as well. It's like, yeah, how do I end the show? You know? so, uh, yeah, so that, that brings us to the end of the show. Have you guys enjoyed it? Yeah! yeah. yeah. So, can I have a massive round of applause, Benji?
Please a round of applause for my mate, Dave Lynch. He's a cunt, because he's got him. Back in the day. And uh, give yourselves a big round of applause. And obviously, my partner here. Uh, he comes to every one of my shows. So I can racially abuse him. Right, right. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this was our last show. This is uh, part of the Bolt Festival. And uh, so, yeah, and then we'll put some more shows on at some point in the future. Uh, see how it goes. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your life. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh,